behalf of the family, thank you for being here today. James Carr Hupp, 85, of Springfield, <clears throat> passed away Monday, August 23rd, 2021. He was born on January 13th, 1936, in Springfield, the son of late Robert M. and Grace Hardman Hupp. He graduated from Northwestern High School in 1954 and enlisted in the United States Navy, where he served our country for four years on the USS Ranger aircraft carrier. Jim farmed his entire life on the family farm and retired from International Harvester after 35 years. He was a charter member of the Lawrenceville Volunteer Fire Department, German Township Fire, and EMS. Jim loved to spend time in his community and show that uh, and show that through his many memberships to local clubs, organizations, including the Elks Lodge, Clark County uh, Farm Bureau, American Legion, and Buckeye Sports Lodge. He was also a lifetime member of the NRA and an avid Ohio State fan. Jim is survived by his wife of 37 years, Peggy Mannion Hupp, brother Danny and Billy Hupp of Michigan, children Sherry Liptrap and Tony of Virginia, Tony Hupp of Virginia, Chris and Sally Widener uh, of Springfield, and Kathy Frank and Todd Ryan of Springboro. Thirteen grandchildren, Christopher and Mary Sue Graham, Melissa and David Bell, Amy and Stephen Holland, Nikki and Scotty Sexton, Amanda and Derek Welch, Emily and Adam Bennett, Caitlin Hupp, Ashley Sean Schultz, and Alyssa Frank, Brandon Widener, Miranda Sam Rowe, uh, Sierra Frank, and Cole Hupp. 17 great-grandchildren, sister-in-law Linda Hupp of Springfield, several nieces and nephews, special cousin Noel Carol Hupp of Fort Wayne, and many friends. He was also preceded in death by his brother Larry Hupp and sister Marnie Brown. Solomon wrote these words. There's an appointed time for everything, and there's a time for every event under heaven. A time to give birth, time to die, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war, a time for peace. Jim's time to be born, as we read, was January 13, 1936. Jim's time that he died was August 23, 2021. And today and the days preceding this and the days yet to come, are our days to weep. It goes five, five fast, doesn't it, Peggy? Saw you looking over here at these pictures. It just goes so fast. But weeping is okay. In fact, tears were created by God for us to express grief when words just aren't enough or when we don't have the words to say. Tears are themselves the best testament of life lived with meaning as Jim's was. Your tears tell the beautiful and important story of who Jim was to you. Tears spin the story of sorrow from the void that is passing leaves in your life in a way that no words really can ever express. Yet, also, the only reason there is sorrow to cry over is because you loved him and he loved you. The more love, the deeper the loss. The deeper loss means greater love. Even Jesus cried at the funeral of his friend, even though he knew he was going to raise him in just a few minutes. If he knew he was going to raise him, why did he cry then? Because death just hurts. Loss is loss and it's painful, but your love for Jim is greater than the hurt that you feel now. Great grief, as I said, comes from great love. I love that truth. And so we don't want to grieve, but as we grieve, understand that grief means that there was great love involved and celebrate that. Therefore, grief is the price of love. In fact, grief is our final act of love. So today, we'll do two things. Letting out that grief that expresses our love for Jim, as well as celebrate his life, the life that we had with him. Let's pray. Father, as we go in farther to the service, we ask your grace to be here. I pray that the balm of comfort that only you possess will come and Touch the hearts of these family and friends who've lost such a dear man and such a massive void in their life, Lord. May your spirit come and fill that, and may your grace be in this place today as we remember him and all that he's done. We pray this in Jesus' name. 
Amen. We'll now hear the song, Scars in Heaven. This time we're going to have some memories shared. Uh, first of all, a note from Sherry. If I could write a story, it would be the greatest ever told of a kind and loving dad who had a heart of gold. I could write a million pages, but still be unable to say just how much I love and miss you every single day. I remember all you taught me. 
I'm hurt, but won't be sad because you'll send me down the answers and you'll always be my dad. I love sharing. This time, Larry, did you want to share some thoughts? Oh, Dan. 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 Yeah. The other I, don't think, I don't think I can top Sherry by any means. <laughs> uh, but thank you on behalf of the family for everybody being here today and all the love and support that you've shown and beautiful flowers and all. So um, I come today, of course, with a heavy heart, as many of you do, and, and um, but rejoice in the fact that personally I had Jim for 76 years of my life, and he was a, it was a great brother. Uh, I'm, of course, the youngest of the Hup clan, original clan of Hups uh, uh, from Ramsey Road. Uh, and... Uh, uh, the others before me, Larry, Jim, Marnie, all taught me a few things along the way, and and uh, their love of life and the way they treated people and their uh, uh, values and hard work were all uh, all part of who I became, I think. And. Uh, some of the things they taught me uh, were a little different. I learned from uh, from watching how they did things, and uh, some of the things they did were they got in trouble with mom and dad. Uh, Jim and Larry occasionally didn't see eye to eye, and that lasted uh, from childhood up uh, uh, quite a long time, I think, <laughs> on occasion. But... Uh, I watched as and Marnie watched, and Marnie sometimes participated, but uh, they had to cut, go out when they got in trouble and cut a, cut a, a, uh, a stem off the old uh, snowball bush out by the gas tank, and uh, Mom would uh, proceed to give them a lesson in, in uh, discipline. And if that wasn't enough, then, then Dad came home, and they got it in the woodshed afterwards. So, <laughs> so I learned... I didn't want to participate in that, so I, <laughs> avoidance was the thing I learned there. So, but uh, life goes on. Uh, many memories. I've spent most of my life in Michigan and, and missed a missed a lot of family time with kids. And my nieces and nephews were all little when I left, and they all grew up on me. But we still love them. Um, I remember as a, Jim was nine years, a little over nine years, nine and a half years older than myself, and uh, uh, he went off to the Navy, and I was really proud of my big brother in the Navy, and and uh, he was over there during the Suez crisis before he went on the Ranger. And I remember Mom and Dad were all worried about him, and, and uh, but he got back safely. And uh, I can remember when he used to roll in there after hitchhiking from down Newport News or wherever he was, base was that he was out down on the East Coast there, Chesapeake Bay area. And uh, we'd love to see him roll in there late at night. And, and as I recall, he bought an old Packard, I think it was, Hudson or Packard or something, and he was driving that back and forth uh, on occasion. He didn't get all that much leave, but it was always fun to see him and uh, have him home. Uh, I, uh, he always was inquisitive uh, as a kid, and uh, I think uh, his nephew Mark was a lot like that. He liked to tear him. Mark and Mike were always tearing something down, and Jim was like that too, And he, as I remember when he was young. And, he became a very handy person. He learned a lot and uh, uh, spent his life, of course, as many know. Uh, he was a millwright at International Harvester, and I suspect a good one because he, he liked to do things right. Uh, and when he fixed something, he wanted it fixed right. And uh, he wasn't always the fastest, but uh, he, I think he could depend on him to get the job done. Uh, so he benefited uh, a lot of people, including family and friends and whatnot, with his mechanical skills over the years. One thing I always noted about Jim, and, and, uh, and that's true of many of us, is he always had an affinity for kids. 
He loved kids. And he would tease them and tickle them and work his magic on them and uh, work his way into their heart, and, and uh, uh, as he did many of us. And uh, I remember he used to uh, pick on my granddaughter, who happens to be here today, a little redhead, and uh, she used to call him Uncle Baldy. And I think he, had a, he had other names too, but uh, Uncle Baldy was hers. And... Uh, he always say, I'm going to keep my eye on you, Red. Isn't that right, Jessica? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he did. So. so I think he worked his way into her heart, too. So he was always helpful with advice whenever asked, helpful in doing chores or anything, and always had strong opinions about many things, wasn't afraid to voice those. And uh, he was certainly his own man. Um, um, <clears throat> uh, sometimes he had a little dis problems making decisions, some of you may remember. Uh, <laughs> uh, what, what to have for breakfast or lunch, for instance, or whatever. Uh, sometimes it would puzzle you how he would get so wrapped up in such a small thing, but... Uh, he had to make a lot of big decisions in his life, too. But uh, we all have a few little quirks, I think, that make us who we are. And that was one of the things that I think we'll always remember about Jim is uh, uh, how he got stymied once in a while with some of those decisions. In closing, i I got to say that he was uh, a treasure. I think we all appreciated and uh, a loving brother, father, uncle, husband, grandparent cousin and friend um, I hope he rest in peace and we love him thank you thank you anyone else in the family want to share a memory to start with you can share from where you're at or come up here anyone else Well, I just want to say that Sherry promised me she was going to come up here and read that or give it to the pastor, which was fine, too. Um, I just want to say that, you know, knowing Jim was, was, was more than a pleasure in life. He was the three words I thought about, passionate, kind, and caring. I don't think anyone that I ever knew that knew him would say anything different. He was very passionate about life, passionate about family passionate about uh, uh, farming and uh, passionate about this country, but probably most passionate about Ohio State uh, Buckeyes, uh, particularly if they were winning. And uh, if they weren't, then as Danny said, he had opinions as to how that should be changed. He was very kind. I don't know anyone that I ever met or talked to that, that said he wasn't the kindest person that they probably ever met. And I think if we all sit here and think about that not very long, we would agree, um, and very caring, very caring about uh, the people, uh, the places, the things that he got to do and visit, and uh, and the kids and the grandkids. And I, I don't, I don't know or haven't never heard him say anything other than that was his favorite thing to do. I guess my only concern standing here today is uh, listening to the words of that song and. And thank you, uh, Kelly, for pointing out that song. That was her recommendation. Um, it said there's, in heaven there's nothing broken. And I don't know what he's going to do. Because, <laughs> because you know, um, he, was a, he was our fixer. I mean, I, I never saw anyone in my lifetime that uh, was as good as he was at fixing anything. And, um, and if there's nothing broken in heaven... You know, he's going to have to find something else to do uh, until we all get there and join him. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Well, you can break it and then fix it. <laughs> anyone else have a memory you want to share? Not just family, anyone? You can stay where you're at and just share it. Anything want to be said today to honor the life of Jim? Don't give me any more time than you have to. 
Any any memories? So everybody hang with me because I don't know how I'm going to get through this. So, But he was a heck of a man and loved children and loved his family and all that. And um, I can't say one thing that there's nothing that man could not fix. I I have a, a pretty 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 uh, good knowledge of tools and because of him and pretty pretty good things. <sighs> sorry, sorry. Okay. So there was one time when uh, my window wouldn't roll up. It was the most illest time of when it could happen because it was middle of the winter. It was cold and all that. And I didn't know what to do. So I called Grandpa. I don't remember what time of day it was. It was probably closer to supper time, right, Grandma? So I came over there and we tried to fix it. And couldn't fix it, so he was just gonna just, just, just gonna wrap some saran wrap around it. <laughs> and I was like, well, I don't really know how that's gonna hold up too well, but it, it, it lasted until like two weeks. And it must have blended in well because my mom never knew that the window. <laughs> wasn't out so thanks grandpa I appreciate that and uh so um but yeah he he really put a hundred percent into all of his um anything he tried to fix he made sure he did it right and so I just want to tell that story thank you And saran wrap to the duct tape list of fixes. Anyone else? When we share our story of the one we've lost that helps with the healing, we are going to have dinner back at Lawrenceville Church of God afterwards, and you're welcome to come back and join us. And whether you come back there or just... I would just encourage you as thoughts and memories come to mind that you call family and share them with each other. Every time we tell that story, our grief lightens a little bit <clears throat> and we heal a little bit. So it's important to tell these stories, and I encourage you to do that. I want to read a very short passage of Scripture about a funeral that Jesus was at. Didn't intend to go to it, but he ended up at one. Luke 7 Jesus went to a city called Nain, and his disciples were going along with him, and accompanied by a large crowd. Now as he approached the gate of the city, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a sizable crowd of the city was with her. So she had a big crowd, Jesus had a big crowd. When the Lord saw her, he felt compassion for her and said to her, Do not go on weeping. And he came up, touched the coffin, the bearers came to a halt, and he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. And the dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. Fear gripped them all, and they began glorifying God, saying, A great prophet has risen among us, and God has visited his people. Very short story, but Jesus interrupted this funeral that he came upon that day with some very important truths. And I like Jesus, for lack of a better word, to interrupt this funeral as well with similar truths. I think there's three of them that we see here. The first is that the Lord saw her. <clears throat> this mom did not run to Jesus and beg him to bring her son back to life. For her, it was too late. Had Jesus shown up a day or so earlier, things might have been different. 
She had lost her most valuable possession and no one could bring her back. No power was great enough, she thought, to change what had happened. She was so weighed down with grief that she probably didn't even notice Jesus. But he saw her, the passage tells us. And because he saw her, everything changed. That truth is a truth that we need to be interrupted with today. Jesus sees you today, Peggy, and the family, in the middle of your grief, in the middle of your sorrow. Jesus also most definitely saw Jim, especially in his final days and hours, and his compassion is with you today as it was with Jim as he approached his death. Jim was important to Jesus as this mom was to Jesus as well, and he would always keep his eye on him. Jesus, as we've already heard, saw Jim's love for his family, too. He could see that. The care that he gave them. I've been told repeatedly about how amazing of a father and husband and a man in general that Jim was. I know how important Jim and Tony's time was in the barn or the house or in the garage working together. Uh, There's a powerful bond between a father and sons and kids in general when they work together on things that they love. His kids and grandkids loved him, as we've already heard. I also heard Uncle Sparky was a name, along with Uncle Baldy. Something involved something going wrong for a moment, I believe. I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> right. So the, we could see that love that the Lord saw, too. And like Jesus sees those kind of things, we also saw, as mentioned, Jim's passion for farming and working with his hands. In fact, we did notice it. The, some of the arrangements have corn from his field. Probably going to be upset about that, that you're picking his harvest. Uh, but corn and, and soybeans uh, from his place, where he spent most of his life right there on Ramsey Lane. And what a beautiful place it is uh, out there. And I'm just jealous of having one place where you're at most of your life. I moved so many times. Um, but he spent his life there, and he had a passion for that. And we see that as Jesus sees him. We also see Jim's passion for certain topics. I think it was Dan that told me yesterday, and he kind of mentioned it. Um, he, he said, Jim had a robust way to share his feelings. <laughs> oh, wow. That's politically correct. That's, that's kind of sweet. And wasn't afraid to share them, which is good. Since Chris retired, maybe you should go into politics. That's a good, <laughs> a good politics. Um. Like Jesus, we could see his love expressed in many ways. One of those ways is his love for his dog, Lucky, which the ashes are over here, even going to be buried with him. The story I understand was that uh, which daughter brought the dog home? That was you. (laughs) He said, that dog's not staying here or something to that effect. Well, apparently he was a liar, too, because... (laughs) That dog did stay, and they grew such a bond. And someone who can love a dog, an animal like that, just has love in their heart and can share that with people. That bond between them was beautiful. What a blessing. And most of Jim's life was healthy. Uh, And and just so much of it was outside of hospital or medical. And and one of the phrases I heard that he used a lot was one my dad used. I suppose if we ask him, uh, he would say his life was as fine as frog's hair. And, uh, and that is, that's a blessing. But even at 85, that's too short. It's always too short for someone we love. So in the story, Jesus saw the widow grieving and when she didn't even see him. And Jesus also interrupts his funeral today to remind us that he sees you today. As he saw Jim and the needs of his family. And as he reaches out to you today and care for you as he did this poor uh, mom who had lost her child. And I'm going to thank Jim for his hard work of loving his family. Second truth we read in the story is that uh, Jesus not only saw her, but his heart overflowed with compassion. Jesus didn't merely acknowledge the heartbreak this day and brought that the woman had been walked on by. He didn't just step aside and let the funeral pass by. He stopped the casket bearers to restore life to a dead son. He raised the boy from death to life, not to draw attention to himself, but to demonstrate his compassion, I believe, towards this woman. Now, obviously, we would love it 
if Jesus were to come today and do that very exact same thing. But the reality is that that boy who he raised would later die again unless he was there to fix it every time. But what Jesus really did was he fixed the death problem once and for all, for all of us. That death was fixed by the resurrection of his body and the payment of our sins on the cross. And the Bible tells us very clearly that those who trust in Jesus will live even if they die. In other words, our fix is in, and that hope is coming. I know those who trust in Jesus will live again, and that in Jesus there is even life after death. So like that day with that funeral with that mom, Jesus interrupts us today with life. Not resurrection life at this moment, but the Bible says that we grieve because there's loss. But we grieve not as those who have no hope. It is the hope that is the life in us today that Jesus interrupts us with and remind us of that hope. So we grieve, but not as those who have no hope because there is life after death. So this funeral is interrupted today with resurrection life through Jesus Christ. Just as Jesus didn't have compassion and walk on but got involved, Jim was also that kind of man, as you've heard in some of these stories. He served and helped his fellow man here in our community in many ways and overseas fighting for a country. I absolutely thank him for that. In fact, he was the first crew on the Ranger, was he not? And uh, served us in many different ways and I definitely honor him for that. And so he got involved in things that mattered. And I say this at every funeral I preach. Our greatest fear should not be a failing, but we should be terrified of instead is succeeding at something in life that doesn't matter. That should be our fear. Jim succeeded at so many things that mattered. Family, community, loving on those who are closest to him and helping those in need. And there is a third truth, and that is no one is ever lost in a crowd. When Jesus arrived on the scene, as I said earlier, Jesus had a large crowd with him, and he was busy. He had stuff to do, and there was a large crowd with her. It would have been easy just to ignore it all, but he didn't. Jesus sees us today as individuals, not as as a member or a member of some society group. The miracle was not only for the son, or for the town, or even for the disciples. The miracle was for the mother who was heartbroken. Just think of all the chaos going on in the world. It's not hard to think of today, is it? All the chaos and just the business that is going on in the world, let alone just here in Springfield. And yet Father is very aware today of you and you and you in this moment, in your grief, and he loves you. We are not just a number to him. He knows us in our moment of sorrow. Father is very aware of the loss of Jim and that what that brings to you, that void. He very much knows about all of you here today and the grief that you bear and the days ahead of the grief as special occasions come up, birthdays and holidays. Jim is just not another person to Father. He is a precious child, and he is loved beyond what our minds can even imagine. God loved him so much that he gave his only begotten son. May we be more like Jesus in our lives. May we actually see people the way Jesus saw them, the way the Father does. May we have compassion on them and interrupt their sorrow and their difficult times with love and compassion like Jim did as well, the people he helped and the love that he gave. We've lost Jim. The world is a darker place because of that. But Jim's life and what he valued and what he cared for is not dead. It's living in all of you. Jim's legacy most definitely will continue and can continue. And you need to care that on. That's the best honor you can give Jim is to be to others what he was to you. Jesus saw Jim. He had compassion on Jim. And he never lost Jim in the crowd. That's the truths that Jesus interrupts here today with for us to remember. Now, the last great important truth today is near the end of the story we read where it says Jesus gave the son back to her. The day is coming when we will, when he will give back Jim to you in his kingdom, when we will be reunited again. And all I can say to that is come, Lord Jesus, and come soon. Let's pray. 
Father, uh, life is so fast. Lord, I know for the young people here it doesn't seem that way, but as a guy who's over the hump, uh, it's fast. So let's make the most of it. Father, help us to, to make the most of absolutely every breath. It's too short to spend bitter and unforgiving and resentful and angry and all the junk that is around us. Lord, may we succeed in something in life that matters. For me, that's relationship with you. And may people come to know you and your son. But Lord, I pray today specifically for this family in the days ahead and the holidays and those special occasions, Lord, that you'll just soothe that void and that brokenness. And Lord, that the difficult memories of the last couple of weeks, that you'll just let those fade and that the memories of laughter and love together will be the memories that they have until the day we meet again. We thank you for that hope. So we grieve today, but not as those who have no hope. Lord, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, they're going to play the song Amazing Grace, and then they're going to prepare for the folding of the flag. Again, we invite you to Lawrenceville Church of God. It's on the corner of Fox Hollow and 41 for lunch. The easiest way is to go to the back door of the building, and we'll have supper there for you.